Rapscallion Agency. A Leviathan Chronicles story. Chapter 7. Les Leurs et les Démons. Decoys and Demons. Is this the location, Monsieur? It is. Our tracking shows they haven't moved in hours. Oh, they think they're hiding, eh? <laughs> Do you want me and Axel to go in and get them? No. No, Enzo. I'll handle this. Monsieur Meridon exited the black sedan and approached the metal garage door covered in graffiti. He made a small hand signal to Axel that told him to hang back a step. You were right, Paul. You knew I'd find you again. Cover the rear door. Well, it's nice of you to drop by. Give us back what you stole, and we can put an end to this. Really? Just like that, huh? But wait, what exactly happens to us? Nothing needs happen to you. You're not what we want. Just open the door and give us back what you stole. That's all we want. And you promise you'll just let us go? Of course. Now open the door. Pinky swear on it? What? I... This is our lives we're talking about. Really serious stuff. Do you super duper pinky swear to not hurt us or do anything violent with that Swiss army knife hand of yours? I... we do. Now open the door. Okay, just, um... You're stalling, Paul. Just give us a second. We have cutting saws here to get in. Okay, okay, just, just, uh... They can cut through a lot more than this metal door. Just stand back. Get out! The aluminum door of the garage exploded out as the air burst onto the street and turned sharply left. Hold on, sir! They have the asset! Go, go, go! They're heading east! Want me to cut them up on Rue de No, stay behind them. Whatever you do, don't lose them! Tell Axel to head to Rue de Port on the bike. Axel, station a checkpoint at Rue de Port. They're turning left! Hold on! Get alongside them! These roads are too narrow! Damn it! Get closer! There are too many cars! I said get closer! I'm trying! They're not getting away! Hit the rear bumper! Trying to get to the highway! Is Axel in position? Axel, have you arrived at Rue de Port? I'm blocking on the only road across the lake. They'll have to come through me to get away. In position! No getting away this time. Enzo, the assault rifle! Maxi! This is for last night. Hold steady! <laughs> trying to make it up for it! <laughs> <laughs> We're driving straight to Axel. Get ready, my friend. Ten seconds to intercept. Ready. The Eclair threw itself into a hard right turn, tipping the van onto its left two wheels. It raced down Rue Moreau, spraying pools of water onto the sidewalk. Pull up to the driver window. The thick rain made it difficult for Curricant to see ahead, but he brought the Eclair to a hard stop as soon as he saw Axel blocking the middle of the road, holding two Scorpion machine guns pointed directly at the windshield. Au revoir, Paul Lee. Axel, quick! Open the door! Get the bodies out so we can find the asset! Hurry! Eh, boss! Come here! You need to see this! Merdok felt the unfamiliar feeling of having his stomach drop as he watched Enzo open the driver's side door of the Eclair. The seats and dashboards were covered in glass shards and ammunition casings, but the cabin was completely empty. No one was in the driver or passenger seat. Merdok's eye immediately honed in on the unusual steering wheel, which had an odd metal box attached to it. The truck is empty. It twitched right and left as if being moved by an invisible hand. The truck is empty! That's... that's... that's impossible! It's not impossible, you imbecile! Can't you see the van was being remotely operated? It was a decoy, Enzo! Those damn thieves are clever. Damn it! <laughs> Meanwhile, ten miles north. stabbed my van. He literally stabbed my van. Look at that video replay. Damn it. 
May I remind you that it's Alvan? And I'm pretty happy that we weren't inside of it when he had that little temper tantrum with his machine gun. But he just stabbed our van! Who does that? Who stabs cars like that? Just be happy we're on a train heading back to Paris. Modifying the autopilot to remote drive the van was a really smart idea. Well, did you think I was just sitting around playing video games with Raptor? Well, it was worth it. It gave us a big head start and got us out of that grimy garage. That was a close call. I've been thinking. The metal hand guy must be from Vatek, right? He said we had to give back what we stole. We stole from Vatek, so he must work for them. Yeah, but why not let the police handle it? Seems like Vatek wants to get the rat back without anyone knowing about it. Well, someone definitely knows. We were being chased and shot at by someone in a white coat before Vatek took them out. Thieves stealing from thieves. That guy with the robot hand wasn't a thief. He's the person you sent to make things so people disappear. Well, if that guy's Ginsu hand is any indication, Vatek is making some pretty big advancements in human cybernetic augmentation. Just humans? Clarican, you saw the tip of Cookie's tail glowing. You saw what she did. Nature doesn't grow fiber optic spinal cords. <gasps> Wait, Clarican, look. Do you see that? It's happening again. She's doing it now. Look, her tail is glowing red. Lizette and Clarican exchange suspicious looks. No number. Me neither. Hello? Holy crap, look at my phone. Look at all these characters racing across the screen. Me too, I can't make it stop. Yeah, I'm trying to turn it off, but my phone is locked. Me too. Man, it's so weird. Do you think... Hey, it, it stopped. Clarican, cookie's tail, it stopped glowing. My phone is working again. Mine too. You don't think... Yeah, I don't know. That looks like some sort of encrypted data stream. If we were back in the Eclair, I could use Excalibur to decompile it. But, uh, well, you know who would probably know about this. Your friend Raptor? Do you really think he can figure out what's so special about Cookie? Maybe. Besides, we need to go to his lair anyway to get the Eclair. Are you really committed to calling Avan the Eclair? Are you really committed to calling the Red Cookie? She loves the macaron you bought. Seems like the best name for her. Here, watch this. Cookie! Cookie nuzzled her way out of Lisette's bag and hopped onto the tray by Lisette's seat to happily munch on the pastel macaron for Madame Dubois' boulangerie. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, I wonder what else we can teach her. I, I thought you didn't like rats. I don't. I mean, I, I do, but I'm, well, I like Cookie. I don't get it. Why? I don't like other people's rats. Only my own rat, okay? Only Cookie. We're really going with Cookie. She's... she's kind of cute. Look at her little whiskers. Aww. She tickled me. <laughs> Cookie! I think you better put it away before someone on this train thinks it's a cousin of the pizza rat and calls the conductor. Well, we can't lose Cookie. She's our only bargaining chip. If they find out we lost her, they'll kill us just for knowing about her. For some mysterious reason, this little rodent is worth more than a Bugatti. And people are willing to kill for it. I wonder why. What makes it so special? It's not an it. It's a her. How do you know? Nipples. I beg your pardon? Nipples. Cookie has nipples. I'm a boy. I have nipples. Not 12 of them. How do you know? God, I still can't believe that guy stabbed our van. Hey, Lisette, tell me again. What exactly did Victor tell us we were supposed to steal? He said it was a microchip. One that would change everything. Well, it certainly changed things for us. I think Cookie must be serving as a location beacon. But hopefully our train is moving fast enough that it will be hard to pinpoint our location. The tunnels should help too. If they really are tracking us through Cookie, then I think I know a place where no one can find us. Where? Trust me. What do you mean the van was empty? It was remotely operated. We didn't realize it before it was too late. The thieves had already escaped with the asset. Do you understand the gravity of the situation? Of course. The North Korean sale is in two weeks. We've already accepted 25 billion in deposited funds. That's a direct tie to a rogue terrorist regime by a Fortune 500 company. Someone else is trying to find them. And maybe someone did. <sighs> we need the damn prototype back. That rat's genetic code was the only successful mammalian sample to achieve biotransference with the new microchip implants. We can't create more clones without the master. We could stall. There's no grace period with the People's Republic, Merodak. 
As soon as they think we stole the founds, they'll leak the data of our human testing on the refugees. It'll be over. Everything. Then we need to find them. The satellite link with the rats implants is showing Paris, but uh, can't pinpoint their location. How is that possible? Hard to say. The satellite link should provide coverage, so there must be some interference. <sighs> that could be anything. Uh, whatever it is, they're on the move. Or someone else got to them first. Are you saying that if we find the rat, we find them all? I'm saying the data contained in the hard drive in that rat's brain could destroy everything we've worked for. We need to get closer to track them. We need more sensors. If you're suggesting using the drones, may I remind you we'd be breaking a dozen laws and bringing very unwanted attention back to VTEC. May I remind you, Doctor, that there won't be a VTEC if we don't find the asset. How long do we need to prepare the drone fleet? I can have 50 flynets airborne within four hours. We can blanket each district, and by getting closer to ground level, we can heighten the tracking sensitivity. Wait until after 2 a.m. We want as few curious pedestrians on the street. I'll speak to our operations team. Keep the team small. Don't worry. If the rat is still in Paris, we'll find it. train station. We need to move quick. Now that they know the truck was a diversion, they could be tracking us as we speak. So stay off your phone, no matter what. I know how to hide, Clark. I, I, I know you do. So there's really a safe house nearby where we'll be untraceable? I don't know about untraceable, but I know somewhere where I'm pretty sure no one can find us. Are you like, sure, sure? I think you need to trust me. I'm just asking. Cookie thinks you need to trust me too. Thanks, Cookie, but it's Lizette's friends I don't trust. And by the way, having a little white rat on your shoulder isn't exactly inconspicuous. Maybe we can put Cookie back in the box with the Macrons? Cookie's fine where she is. We just need to move away from all these commuters and tourists. We need to head to Hall 3, the lower part of the train station. The pair moved swiftly down two flights of escalators to the lowest level of Gare de Lyon. Come on. Lisette walked ahead and passed several maintenance kiosks this way. as she entered the operational section of the station. Okay. Lisette stopped in front of a door with a sign that read This is the tricky part. Track access. Authorized personnel only. We have to wait for the coast to be clear. Well, there's not too many folks around. Just that floor cleaner way down to the left and a few metro guards. I see them. Stand in front of me, will you? Gotcha. You can come closer, you know. Ooh la la. To cover the door while I pick the lock, I mean. Okay. Yeah. Now wait. Wait for them to turn their heads and... Now! The Zed and Hurricane deftly slipped behind the metal door and found themselves inside one of the train tunnels deep under the station. This way, another 500 meters. I, uh, any concerns about trains barreling down on us? Lots of concern. I'm pretty sure a TGV train moving at full speed would kill us and cookie. Yep, that's that's exactly what I was thinking. The two of them maneuvered along the edge of one of the underground tracks before the Zed turned right. Come on, this way. Don't let your feet touch the tracks. Ah, they just stepped in water. Hurry! Yeah, that, that, that wasn't water. Here, put on this head. Where are we going? In here, through this door. Come on, get in. The pair exited the tunnel through an unmarked door alongside the train tracks and found themselves in a small storage chamber with a rusted iron ladder leading down through a roughly chiseled hole in the floor. Not a moment too soon. I assume that this isn't the Eurostar lounge? Well, there might be a gift box down below. Oh, and put on a jacket. It's going to get a lot colder. How far down are we uh, yet? Uh, about 20 meters below uh, the sidewalk. Yeah, I get it. This far underground, no one will be able to land a trace signal on us. <clears throat> Smart thinking, Lisette. Uh, it's something I learned from Harlequin. When in distress, look for water. Otherwise, get underground. If not, gain altitude. Always look at your situation three-dimensionally. Stay nimble, Lisette. Ha! We're here. Keep your head down. The ceiling is really low. Oh, no. I'll definitely... Watch it. This way. Listen, uh... I don't know if you're aware, but, um... We are surrounded by skeletons. The entire wall, this, this entire cave, is lined with human remains. Literally, human bones. We're in the Paris catacombs. One of the south branches. One that's not on any of the maps. 
How far does this branch lead? The catacombs stretch over 200 miles underneath Paris. Some of the paths are caved in and blocked by water. There's a lot of secret entrances that people have discovered, even though it's illegal. My sense is that didn't slow you down. It didn't. Here, follow my headlamp. This way. Okay, and now left. Ah, uh, this already feels like a maze. Very, very creepy maze. Well, then you'd better stay close. <laughs> or at least hope your headlamp doesn't go out. Hey, can, can you wait a second? Uh, what is it? I need a minute to uh, breathe. I'm oh, uh, feeling a little bit uh, short of breath. Clarican, uh, are you all right? Oh, okay, okay, just breathe. I am breathing. Breathe I'm strong. Trying. Uh, there. There. It's okay. There. Okay, okay. Uh, you, you never told me that you were so claustrophobic. I'm not, actually. I've just never been this close to bones. Death. Just really afraid of, of, of death. The abyss, the darkness. It really freaks me out, not existing. It, it, it's not death. I mean, of course it is, but uh, really it's just uh, people. Dead people. Uh, people that led entire lives. Had jobs, had children. Uh, how are you feeling now? A little better. Let's keep going. Come on, it's just up here. This is the spot where we'll be safe. In between the carefully stacked piles of skulls, femurs, and tibias that lined the cavern walls, there was a diminutive wooden door that Lisette pushed open, leading into a small antechamber with a cross hanging on the far wall above a dusty steamer trunk. So, what is this place? It's a room we found many years ago. Uh, who's we? The Sacred Sisters. You're gonna need to give me a lot more information about that. When I made the decision that I didn't want to be running Madame La Liberté's scams anymore, I ran away from the orphanage when I was 13. Harlequin took me in and raised me, but someone else found me as well. A group of young girls living on their own, working for themselves in Paris, like a sorority of scams. The Pirates of Prada? <laughs> Charming. I thought you said you liked sororities, Clerken. Yeah, that's very cute. So you traded one crime ring for another. Look who's talking. At least we didn't get busted like your censored club. Whoa, whoa, that's a low blow. You have no idea what went down. Well, of course not, because you never talk about it. You don't exactly have a sympathetic ear. Oh, so it's my fault. All right, just stop. You found an alumni group of thieves and pickpockets. More like survivors. We would do some small jobs together, wallet lifts, small break-ins, sometimes a car, sometimes I would help. But uh, Holoquin didn't like me hanging out with them. So you quit the gang? Of course not. I never asked to be Harlequin's ward, and I didn't want him choosing my friends. Sometimes your friends are all you have. He never understood that. Oh, hard to learn that lesson when you're immortal. But maybe he was just being a careful dad. I know, he's not your dad. I didn't want to spend my life being his anchor to a mortal existence. I'm not a stupid prop. Huh? Well, you are definitely not a prop. Hey! And not stupid. Not stupid. I, just a little goth, maybe. So, what happened? So I just got better at sneaking out of the house. I'd meet the girls at this club they used to hang out in. But uh, one day, they showed me this place. A hiding place. Somewhere a girl could lie low if she didn't want to be found. It's not pretty, but it's safe. And if I'm not mistaken... Ha, yes. Here, look. Wow, there's a steamer trunk down here. Please tell me it's full of money and we could just buy a ticket home. <laughs> That's Pandora, a magic box. There was a rule that whenever you visited the chamber, you had to leave something useful for the next person. That way the box kept getting better. So let's see what we have. Uh, Clarican, can you shine your headlamp over here? Sure. Oh, this is good. There's a top, a small lantern. Oh, there's a Toblerone. Ooh, what flavor? White chocolate. Mm. Uh, you can have it. Well, Cookie can have it. Well, if you hand me the tarp, I can set us up here on the ground. Great. I think I saw a few blankets. Hey, that was really good thinking. I mean, don't get me wrong, this is creepy as hell. It's freezing and provokes some deep-seated concerns about your childhood, but you bought us some time, and I'm really glad I trusted you. Thanks. You okay? What were your parents like, Clerican? Why do you ask? Just wondering. Well, I never knew my dad super well. Was always traveling, but my mom was, uh, huh. I guess you could say she was the classic tiger mom. Really, I felt closest to my grandmother. She always was pushing me too, but I knew it was because she loved me and was proud of how I was always doing in school. She made me feel loved. 
I never knew my parents. I never learned why they gave me up. Oh God, I hate that stupid expression. <laughs> Maybe it wasn't even they. Maybe my mother was an amazing hero on the run and did it to protect me. <sighs> I'll never know. All I was allowed to know was the orphanage. I'm sorry. That must be really hard. And I guess I always took it for granted that I knew where I came from. Like, um, the beginning of my story. <sighs> well, I never had that. That special thing when you can look at your parents and have some sense of who you are. That you belong to something. The thing that gives you some context to figure out why you are the way you are. I never knew my parents. Never learned why they left me at the orphanage. Who knows why they did what they did? But I do know that it had nothing to do with you. You understand that, right, Lisette? Six million people buried down here. Some say seven. Just based on the numbers, sometimes I like to think that uh, maybe someone I'm related to or, or somebody down here might be family. My family. I know, I know it's weird, but it, it comforts me to come down here and feel that I'm not alone. I do come from some place. You're not alone. I'm here. I'm here. I'm in your life. And I'm not going anywhere. Unless... Unless what? Unless living together or even working together isn't what you had in mind? No, no, Clarkin. That is what I want. I want to be with you. Come here. Hold my hand. Yeah, the ceiling is low. Mm-hmm. Oh. Doesn't this place uh, creep you out a little? I would think that all these dead bones would make you feel uh, sad. No, not the bones. The rats, maybe. No offense, Cookie. Or the roaches. Oh, thanks for that. But not the bones, actually. Wait, do you wonder if your parents are here? God, no. This place was built two centuries ago. Too long for my parents. Or even my parents' grandparents. Or even their parents. But just speaking mathematically, the odds are that someone in my family line is down here. Someone whose blood I might share. And that's the most family I have. Oh, what about Harlequin? I love Harlequin, I do. But he's not my family. The whole reason I'm here is because I don't want to be like him. Still fighting and obsessing over things that happened centuries ago. I don't want to get lost in his reflection. That's why I wanted to start a new life here. I could be your family, Lisette. Family doesn't always mean blood. In fact... Token, you did really well today, too. Really well. And you were a great partner. You did a brilliant job driving, and it was a smart idea to install the remote drive on the Eclair. Thanks. We'll figure out what to do with Cookie in the morning. Assuming she doesn't run off with her million other cousins living down here. Sounds good. Yeah, sounds good. Listen, I'm, uh, I'm pretty smoked. And if we're really safe down here... Token, then... I'm really tired, too. Come lay down. Next to me, please. And let's get some sleep. Yeah, that sounds really good. Good night, Lisa. Bunny, Clarkin. Three hours later. Clarican. Clarican. I wish I could sleep like you. Mm. Just as well. I need to call Adele. Oh, I can't believe it was her that burnt us. Oh, damn it. No set reception. I need to find a section of the tunnels closer to the surface. I think there's a spot a hundred meters ahead. I need to look for the ladder. Adele, listen to me. Who did you tell about the job? Who else knew what we were doing at Vatek? What? what are you talking about? No one. I didn't tell anyone. Don't lie to me, Adele. I really need to know. I swear to you, Lisette. I didn't tell anyone else. Just, just tell me where you are, and I can come get you. Victor says you guys are in really big trouble. In the last 24 hours, I've dealt with a flamethrower, a zipline, and a well-dressed assassin, so yeah, I think we are in trouble. Lisette. What happened? You know what? It doesn't matter. You can tell me where you are, and I'll get you. I need to know if I can trust you, Adele. You can trust family, Lisette. Sisters always stick together. <sighs> um, okay. 
I believe you, Adele, but listen, I need to get out of the country. Fast. We've got police trying to find us and some other other people trying to kill us. This is bad, Adele. Lizette, listen to me. I can get you out of France. I still know some people. What kind of people? My friend, an old client, runs a smuggling operation for stolen art using private jets for executives. I can get you a seat on a blind flight under a different name. Two seats. That's going to be hard. I said two seats. Okay, fine. Two seats. But you have to tell me where you are. No, 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 no. It's too dangerous. I'll, uh, I'll just come to you. Fine. Um, fine. Then, then meet me at Nebelje Private Airport. There's a storage hangar off the north runway, outside the security zone, so you should be able to get inside. I'll send you the link to the location. Meet me there tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. Don't be late, or I won't be able to get you out. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Adele. My orphan sister. I've got you, Lisette. I'll see you there later. And remember, stay out of sight. I will. And Adele, merci, ma chérie. Au revoir, ma louloute. Lisette put her phone back in the pocket of her jeans and returned to the small chamber where Cloracan was sleeping. She was surprised to see a yellow glow emanating from the room. Lisette! Cloracan, you awake? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, come here. Look at Cookie. Her tail. The tip is glowing yellow. Yeah. I think her tail color has something to do with how she's feeling. I think yellow means she's thinking. How do you know? Because I've been teaching her some new tricks. Seriously, Cookie is an Ivy League rat. So smart, and she learns so easily. Look, see this baguette? It's Cookie's reward. Watch this. Chloricane brought the discarded Toblerone bar in front of okay, Cookie's now. whiskered face. Cookie, And then baguette. tossed it across the room. Go fetch Cookie baguette. <gasps> no. <laughs> oh, good girl. Great job. Here you go. Have a little bread. Good job. Good fetch, Cookie. Look how cute she is. <laughs> oh my god. That's amazing. Cookie. What else can she do? She just learns stuff really easily. Vatek must have done something to her. But look, I also taught her this. Call her over to you, like you did before. Okay. Cookie. Macaron. Cookie scampered up Lisette's pant leg and rested on her shoulder. <laughs> she did it! She learned come! Yeah, she did. Now, put Cookie in your hand. Okay. Cookie! Crepe! Crepe Cookie! Ow! Aya! She bit me! Cookie! Clarican, that's not a nice trick. Uh, it might come in handy sometime. Not unless you're crepe. But she would never hurt anyone, would you, Cookie? Look how cute she is. Oh, do hi, Cookie. <laughs> I told you. Ah, oh, she's so sweet. I think I can get her to go into our backpacks with a croissant, but it's amazing. It's like she wants to learn. Or wants to eat. Which reminds me, uh, how much longer do we need to stay buried here? I'm starting to get hungry myself. We should go to Raptor's lair. His place is cloaked and we can figure out what was on that data stream that Cookie was puking out. Okay, but we can't take long. I spoke to Adele. She said she can get us out of the country on a private plane in the morning. I don't know, Lisette. Do we really trust her after what happened at Vete? I trust her, Cloricon. I do. You trust me, right? I... I do. I do. It's just... Just what? Uh, nothing. Um... What about you, Cookie? Do you trust Adele? But Cookie said nothing, as she was entranced by the leftover crepe from Madame Dubois that she was consuming happily on the floor by Chloricane's feet. Back in Adele's apartment. I've got you, Lisette. I'll see you there later. And remember... Stay out of sight. I will. And Adele, merci, ma chérie. Au revoir, ma louloute. What did she say? She says they'll come to the hangar tomorrow. They'd better, or I swear I'll kill them both right before I kill you. have been listening to The Rapscallion Agency, a Leviathan audio production written and created by Christophe Lepotka. Go to rapscallionagency.com or to dive deeper into the story, listen to The Leviathan Chronicles on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. The Rapscallion Agency was executive produced by Amish Chani, produced and mixed by Robin Shore, produced by Claire Dodin and Kim Donovan, casting by Claire Dodin and Kim Donovan, 
Original music by Luke Allen. Editing and sound design by Luke Allen and Robin Shore. Directed by Christophe Laputka. Starring Claire Dodin as Lisette Mazabi. Todd Habercorn as Clerica. Caroline Givache as Dr. Terra Venezuela. Gary Armagnac as Monsieur Merida. Monia Ayashi as Adèle Lesange. Christian Roman as Victor. Terence Smith as Enzo. Luc de Villard as Axon. William T. N. Hall as Harlequin. Narrated by Benoit Monin. For a full cast list, go to rapscallionagency.com. To learn more about our other audio drama podcasts, go to leviathanaudioproductions.com or follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to get the latest news and behind-the-scene footage. Thank you for supporting Leviathan Audio Productions. And thank you for listening to The Rapscallion Agency. Production.